Good afternoon, welcome to Donington Park. As you can see, the Genettas are just beginning their green flag lap. And then, of course, we will crack on with the action. It's a beautiful day here at Donington Park. It started off really wet. We were thinking it was going to be a very slippy day on track. It was going to have a real wash. However, the sun has graced us for the last couple of hours, and it's warming up. So I think we're in for some sensational action and of course we have two of the finest in the land on comms for you i am of course referring to the mighty andy McEwen and martin Haven. you're far too kind andy thank you very much yeah, uh, just <laughs> rescued himself from us mentioning that he was very late arriving today so well done indeed andy <laughs> joe indeed. No, it, it is beautiful though beautiful conditions i'd love to know what the track temperature is because we just saw the minis out really struggling for three or four laps to find uh, tire temperature and that's very much going to be a factor. It is a bright sunny day. It is blustery though um, The track now thoroughly dry As the Ginetta GT5s head out on track. So let's take a look at the grid then Max Bird the winner of the first race here, which was held yesterday on uh, pole position from Gordon March and James Kellett and Ryan Hadfield on row two, Carlito Morocco, Alex Toth Jones row three, Matt Rainbow and uh, Jeremy Nicosia uh, Nicosia on uh, row four, uh, Morgan Quinn and Conor O'Brien on row five of the grid. Now there are 31 cars on the entry yesterday. Guess how many finished? 31. Fantastic. So uh, we're looking forward to, again, a 100% finishing record today and hopefully lots of good entertaining racing as well. James Kellett was the man who started on pole yesterday, ended up in third. Max Bird had started second, Gordon much third after qualifying. So we can expect, hopefully, uh, a similarly entertaining race this time round. So Johnny Greenwood will be penultimate on the grid and the 31st and final starter should be Dale Abbott. Yes, the back of the grid generally filled out by the AM drivers. There are two classes of car, of, uh, not car, but of driver that race within this championship. All the cars are identical uh, Geneta G40 uh, GT5 spec cars, but uh, based upon your levels of experience or inexperience, perhaps in motorsport, you are then separated into pro and AM classes. So the pro drivers generally at the front of the field, the AMs towards the back. The top AM yesterday was Nick Halstead in 14th overall. That, therefore, is where he starts today. So Max Bird on pole position from Gordon Much alongside him, then James Kellett and Ryan Hadfield. Alex Toth Jones, who starts in sixth position, uh, that's after a five second penalty for exceeding track limits, which dropped him precisely zero places, just a little further back behind Carlito Miracco. So uh, the penalty uh, for uh, exceeding track limits in the end didn't uh, gain him anything, clearly, and didn't. Ooh didn't cost me anything. You see how blustery it is, can't you? So Max Bird 44 with the blue highlights and then the white car with the uh, black and orange Ginetta. That's very Ginetta corporate, isn't it? Gordon Much uh, on the outside the front row of the grid. So 31 cars. Dale Abbott will be the last uh, on the grid. And again, it is two by two, but the rows are staggered. So it does look like it's two and then everyone on row two of the grid. Green flag waves, red lights are on, and away we go. And not a great start from the front row men. Ryan Hadfield going around the outside and squeezing already. 41, the all-white car really squeezing. Carlito Morocco with two wheels on the grass going backwards at a prodigious rate, unfortunately, on the inside. That doesn't work sideways in the middle of the field. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. <laughs> Half oh. the field, essentially, in the gravel at Redgate. That was Katie Milner that got turned sideways, and really she had nothing she could no. do to avoid being collected by pretty much the whole field. Uh, at the front, it's Max Byrne, I think, from James yep. Keller, the championship leader. Exactly as, right. Unsurprisingly, we go safety car. Uh, we sort of saw that one, didn't yep. we, with uh, umpteen cars off at Redgate, and only some of them able to dig their way back out of the gravel. So they didn't hear me correctly. I said I wanted 31 finishes, not 13 <laughs> finishes. Oh, more contact. Oh. That's the 48 car around. Yeah. Uh, that is up at McLean's, and uh, that car will just about get going because it's not in the gravel. That's Gordon Much, second place yesterday. Oh. He already lost ground from a poor start, and yeah. that's what it does. It puts you back in the hornet's nest, doesn't it? Well, frankly, everywhere is the hornet's <laughs> nest, isn't it? <laughs> so yellow flags waving. Should be safety car board out as well. There's Gordon Much uh, backing onto the circuit. Again, not to be advised at the best of times. Yes, well, there was no one really left behind him. Yeah, so to, but to he doesn't off. know that because <laughs> it's blind behind him. Yes. So 
going in the wrong direction of travel. These are things that will fail you in your ARDS test, your license that you have to take. Um, so, safety car is out, and as you say, Max Bird uh, from James Kellett, Ryan Hadfield, his big uh, lunge for the lead in the first couple of corners didn't really work out too well for him. Uh, he ended up in uh, Ryan, Ryan Hadfield in fourth place behind James Kellett and Carlito Morocco. And there is quite a lot of broken bodywork to be sorted out. They have got another race today as well, unfortunately. Katie Milner's car number 50 there. You see her examining it. And uh, that car, very second-hand. Not from where it was turned around, but from where it then became the repository into which several other Ginettas couldn't avoid placing themselves. So, how many cars running at the end of the lap? Looks like more than 20, actually. 24, 25 runners, because Gordon Much has rejoined at the tail of the field. So we so lost six. Yeah. At the first quarter. Well, we assume all at the first quarter. We didn't see any other drivers so on the first Katie lap. So Katie Milner, Charlie Digby, Gus Bowers has gone as well. Uh, Will Dreidel and um, behind, quite from somewhere behind, actually. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Phil McGarty and Johnny Greenwood, the other yeah, two, yeah. Uh, who started. Well, Johnny Greenwood was on the back row of the grid. You might think that being that far back, you could have a fighting chance of avoiding whatever happens in front of you. You have a, at least a bit of warning that something's going to happen, but really, there was nothing anyone could do there. Even if you didn't make contact with anyone, you had to trade through the gravel trap to avoid it. Right, we're going to uh, regain one because Will Dreidel has been into the pits and he's back yeah. out. So, uh, so we will then have 26 cars moving. And has Dreidel lost a lap? Uh, Let's no. take a look again at the start. Katie Milner made a blasting start, got down on the inside. Watch her, the white and red nose moves across to her right immediately. So she's one car away from the grass. And then she tries to make room for herself, nudges somebody else. Oh. Ah, and then turned into her is the orange and black number 19. Uh, is that 19 or no? That's Charlie Digby, I think 31 maybe got turned into her By, from I think behind. Connor O'Brien, I think he was the yeah. grey car that was in there. And the, and the problem is, you know, everybody tries to go to the inside line because they don't want to get knocked off from the outside, but there's only one inside line and three or four cars. Um, trying to take it, and so that's where it all ends up. If you see how much of the volume is bunched on the right-hand side, often, I think, just aiming to go around the outside at Redgate is as safe as anything else. Yes, that was all very unfortunate. The slightest yeah. bit of contact at the wrong moment. <laughs> yeah. oh, that was quite a big hit there for Kate, yeah. wasn't it? So and that was uh, Johnny Greenwood, the, yeah. the car from the last row of the grid, and completely unsighted. He had no idea what was going on. Now, the spin there for Gordon Much was triggered by Ryan Hadfield, who got inside him and basically didn't really negotiate the corner without uh, the use of the car on the outside. So, literal sweep-up operations going on. They're clearing this up very rapidly, yeah. aren't they, which is impressive. There's still a couple of cars, maybe just the one car, um, oh no, two cars still left off at the side of the road, but the hard work of British Marshals, uh, as efficient as ever, yeah. are clearing it up as quickly as they can. Smash but vehicle, do... unfortunately, you can only snatch one at a well, time, yes. so it's going to have to go back for the other one. I do fear, though, for how much racing we're going to have, because this, of course, is only a 15-minute race, so um, they didn't have that much time to start with, and with lap times around here, uh, getting on for two minutes, then yeah. well, and that's that's at racing speed, not behind the safety car. That yeah. uh, particular lap was over three minutes in length behind the pace car. So another couple of those, and we're only going to have time for maybe well, three laps of racing. Yeah, let's say we go green next time round. We're only going to have six minutes left, and I don't think we are going to go yeah. green next time round. There are two cars. Marshall's going to probably push the uh, green and yellow car away, but the other one looks as though it's going to need a tow. So. Yeah, again, hard-working, educated, informed, and volunteering British Marshals. So all the Marshals see at every racetrack do it for free. In fact, more than that, they pay to do it, because they pay to get here, they bring their own food and drinks and look after themselves. If they need to camp, they camp. So it is a, a great way of getting close and getting very involved with motorsport, uh, physically very involved, as well as being right by the action. But. Uh, like every other part of participation in motorsport, it does cost them money. So thank you to all the masters, whether they're here in Donington or anywhere else doing their jobs this weekend, because without them, 
than simply just being their motorsport. Yeah, absolutely right. And they are widely renowned as some of the best in the world. And that's why when you watch Formula One races from the Middle East, then the bulk of the marshals appear to be from the UK yep. and they are they fly out specifically to uh, to well, help out with those and races. And that's a very good point, actually. If you're interested in marshalling, the British Motor Racing Marshals Clubs you can find online would be very, very interesting to talk to you. And it's not just, you know, a windy day at Donington or whatever. You know, if you get yourself qualified, you could easily end up doing races anywhere across the continent. I mean, a huge contingent of British marshals go out to the 24 hours at Le Mans, for instance, the Le Mans Classic. Um, you know, I've seen British marshals ending up at Bathurst and, and all over the place in, in America, in Australia, all over Europe. Um, once you're qualified, if you are interested in going marshalling at, at other race circuits, and why wouldn't you be, you know, why wouldn't you want to spend a weekend at Spa being a marshal? Um, apart from the weather. <laughs> the barbecues make up for that, though, I gather. The barbecues are legendary at Spa among the marshals. And, and again, you know, at Le Mans, I know a lot of marshals go very regularly to 24 hours at Le Mans. And, and, you know, a race like that needs thousands. It doesn't need hundreds. It needs thousands of marshals. I think they had 3,100 marshals and other officials. Oh, for the 24 hours, because it's 24 hours and you work in shifts, you know, they don't expect everybody to be up for 36 hours on race weekend and there's the whole week as well. So it is a really, really uh, exciting, entertaining and very welcoming branch of being involved in motorsport. And uh, yeah, I'm sure all the marshals clubs, wherever you live, would be very pleased to hear from you. And in fact, now is a great time to get involved because there are sort of winter series and winter championships going on and around which the marshals clubs very often arrange um, initiation days, training days before you go live and so on. So it is a great, great time to get started. Yes, it is. And uh, I've been on one of those taster days actually before and realised just how much work was involved. That's why I'm now sat in a nice warm commentary <laughs> box talking about the racing rather than clearing the back to the best of the first corner. So, uh, but my, my, I absolutely uh, appreciate what they do all the more for doing that. Yeah, my, my default position is never a day I'm glad I'm not glad <laughs> that I'm not a cameraman. And again, today is another one. See, I, you were being rained on this morning, you're going to get sunburned and windburned. And the marshals as well, you know, I, I absolutely realise they have the most cushy job in motorsport and uh, absolutely hats off to all the marshals. So our safety car, the lights remain on for the moment, but are they going to go off here so. at the end of timing set to do? Yes, the safety car is slowing up. I think we're going green this time round. We Ooh, are so just about the end of timing set to two. No, we're not. Lights still on. Uh, I'm afraid that means we will be green, white, checker. Let's see, they may make in fact, a late we won't. call. We just go white flag checker, they can't. Lights should be off at the end of timing, sector well, two. Oh, OK, there we go. <laughs> I'd <laughs> rather they did that yeah, than yeah. traipse around for another lap. But I knew that it was Absolutely. touch and go. That car was nearly out of the way when we last saw it. It is now out of the way. Yep. And so the beautiful McLaren safety car, much as we enjoy seeing it, we'd rather see less of it out on the track. You can come and admire it in the paddock afterwards, but we want yeah. to go racing now. Uh, Max Bird would have quite liked the safety car to stay out for another lap because now he's got this big uh, pack of Janettas. Yeah, but nobody he goes racing just to follow no. a safety car around. So in the end, actually, you'd rather race, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> he won't be saying that if he ends up in the gravel trap at Redgate, of course, because yeah, he's well. got right behind him James Kelly. And in a way, that will be a good drive to have behind him because James really just needs three solid points finishes uh, this weekend to wrap up the title. He's ahead of Carlito Maraca by quite some way in the points. So Carlito Maraca, whilst he is there in third place, applying pressure, not likely to take the title away from him. Green flag wave, four and a half minutes of racing, so three laps, I reckon we've got time yep. for, as they race down towards Redgate Corner again. Single file, thankfully, this time around, but will that last? Is anyone going to try and make a dive at the inside? A few people taking a little sneak peek at the inside line. That was the number 83 machine, in particular, of Sebastian Aronram trying yep. to uh, go on the inside. In, in uh, classic Swedish colours, right behind Carlito Maraca, who, as ever, has got the uh, Tricolori, red, white and green of Italy, uh, on the side of his car. In fact, he's behind Hadfield and Alex Toff Jones. So, Carlito Maraca down in uh, sixth position. It's Jerry Nicosia, who was third at the restart. And he was uh, trying to work something out uh, about attacking 
uh, Max Bird and James Kellett, but in fact they have pulled away from him. So James Kellett, car number 13, that's a bold choice, isn't it? You know, racing drivers tend to be a bit superstitious. He's obviously going, I don't care, I'm going with 13, I'm going to make it my lucky number. Good move up the inside, really threw it through on the inside. The 83, Matt Palmer going by, Sebastian Aaron Ram, and off on the grass. It's that's bad. Hadfield, yeah. out from fifth place. So, lock up as well for Nicosia, who gathers it together. So, uh, and not just cold tyres, of course, that are the issue. Cold brakes, yeah. too, because these racing brakes, they operate at such a high temperature uh, that, uh, having been following the safety car slowly for a few laps, that yeah. temperature's all been lost. Nice move there on the inside, though. Alex Toth Jones dies through the inside for third and loses it on the exit. Jerry Nicosia comes back at him. Yeah, the problem is when the brakes get too cold, then they suddenly heat up and really grab. So there's nothing, nothing, nothing. You're pushing hard at all. And then suddenly it's all there as they get into their operating temperature range. Um, and if you're using them more consistently, then there tends to be more of that initial bike still left, even on a quick circuit like Donington. So Max Bird leaves them across the line. We'll get one more after this, won't we? So it was green-white checker pretty much. And uh, a little bobble from Connor Grady. I wonder if that was uh, assistance from behind. Jerry Nicosia in third. Alex Toth Jones with the chrome rear end to his car in fourth. And the leader is starting to creep away. Max Bird, the man who started on pole. Yes, he's uh, been driving very well so far, has Max Bird. Well, yesterday's race by seven tenths of a second. He's probably about seven tenths of a second ahead of James Keller at the moment. This five and third is very entertaining, though. As we get in, Alex Toth Jones draws alongside oh, on the inside that's a of the deal. That's Oh, a I'm good not sure. I'm not sure. Nicosia comes back at him. Jerry Nicosia, former Fiesta Junior champion, so he knows how to get his elbows out and race, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's bought himself the inside line by from Clay, but also this corner at Coppice. Alex Toth Jones, though, trying to go the long way round. He'll have a bit more momentum from that route, but it's fraught with danger. How much room does Nicosia lead him on the exit? Just enough. enough. Yeah, Just that's enough. good clean racing from both men, bearing in mind they were wheel to wheel from Starkey's Bridge, and they're still wheel to wheel as they get to Fogarty's S's, and finally they can't go side by side. So Alex Toth Jones, who finished sixth yesterday, slips by Jerry Nicosia into third. Nicosia ended up in eighth place on the road yesterday. He's made a much better fist of it today. And right behind, 76, Carlito Morocco. Always easy to spot whatever he's racing because of those Italian colours. And Max Bird and James Kellett running away out front as this battle continues. Yeah, Carlito Morocco, another Fiesta Junior graduate. So he and uh, Jerry Nicosia, in fact, raced in the same few seasons in that championship. 51's been off by the looks of it. That's uh, Axel Van Niederveen rejoins towards the back of the field. Also off. I think that says 16, doesn't it? So yeah. that would be Abram Campbell Smith down from Melbourne Herpin. Yeah, so he has spun out of what was about 10th or 12th place, actually, or been helped out of 10th or 12th place. First and second, now, what, four seconds away? Yeah, probably more than that now, nearly five seconds away as they come down these sweeping crater curves, the most fabulous views of cars coming thundering down the hill into the old hairpin and then sweeping down around the lower part of this Grand Prix circuit at Donington Park through Starkey's Bridge. They used to go through the arches of the bridge in the 1930s. Uh, health and safety decided in the 1970s that probably wasn't a very good idea. And it wasn't a very good idea in the 1930s either, I don't suppose. I suppose that the uh, Mercedes and Auto Union drivers or anybody else thought it was a great idea. 17, that's uh, uh, Wesley Pierce. Started 24th and is heading back in that direction now as the leaders again nose to tail. Max Bird just ahead of James Kellett. Yellow flags are out. Why are yellow flags out? We don't see anybody there, but it could be right under the camera, so often is the case. That's where Van Niederveen went off a lap ago, but I thought he'd rejoin, so not too sure what that's all about. Might just have been the yellow flags withdrawn if he's not in front of them, no, so may still be stuck there. Towards Goddard as they come anyway. Max Bird having to get his elbows out here and defend. We thought he was starting to run away with this, didn't we? But James Kellett has closed him down. Check and flag is going to get to Max Bird, or rather he's going to get to it before James Kellett gets to him. Not very many laps of racing. Max Bird set the fastest race lap last time around and claims victory. James Kellett in second. Alex Toth Jones completes the podium ahead of Jerry Nicosia. Carlito Morocco and up from 19th on the grid to sixth position, definitely not hindered by half a dozen cars going missing in front of him, uh, was Matt Palmer. He finished in sixth. 
um, a wayward race. Ambition uh, overcoming his grip levels, if not his uh, ability. Ryan Hadfield finished in seventh, and uh, the rest of them streaming across the line. But uh, that unfortunate incident on the run through the first corner not only cost us half a dozen finishers, but also uh, half a dozen laps of racing. Yeah, that was a shame. The uh, AM class, by the way, won by the 11th place finisher overall, Lucky Carer, and in 13th was the second AM finisher, Lee Frost. And those two, well, they race everything, basically. They both come from a BMW <laughs> racing background, but they've also raced in the Genetta GT4 Super Cup. They race their Genetta GT4 cars in about four or five other series across the country. They still own the BMWs and race them as well. Every weekend, I don't think that's an overstatement, every weekend throughout the uh, summer, um, those two are out racing at some racetrack in the UK. They really do enjoy their racing and a 1-2 in the AM class here today. Fantastic. So Max Bird, James Kellett, Alex Toth-Jones, the podium, head of Jerry Nicosia, Carlito Morocco and Matt Palmer from way back on the grid. Ryan Hadfield, Josh Hislop, Sebastian Aaron Ram and Ash Marshall round out the top ten. And we, in the end, had 24 cars running at the end. So behind Morgan Quinn, uh, three or four, including uh, the car of Will Dreidel, who was one of those first lap victims, but rejoined after the trip through the pit. So we didn't see any more of Charlie DB, Katie Milner, Gus Bowers, Phil McCarthy, and the 31st car, who I forget now, um, but uh, that was Johnny Greenwood, I think, wasn't it? Who, uh, yeah, who was last on the grid and got involved, or last row of the grid and got involved in that incident as well. So unfortunate for them, after a 100% finishing record from the first race, uh, we lost 20% <laughs> of the field. I knew when you said yeah, that, Martin. I know, I know. <laughs> Curse the commentator, what can we do? Yeah, so an entertaining race, though, the bit of racing that we had, and the good news is that uh, we get to do it again at 5 o'clock because they do have three races to do the GT5 Challenge cars, so hopefully all of those damaged in the race today can get back out there. There were a few potential front runners in there, Charlie Digby, Katie Milner, they both had podium finishes in the past mm. as well. So uh, hopefully by five o'clock they should have yeah. the cars ready to race. As you say, four and a half hours to fix it. If it's fixable, it's fixable in that time. If it's going to need workshop or welding or, or a jig, then yeah, absolutely not. However, our top three are now finding out how small the Ginetta GT5 door is as they try and get out having parked up next to each other. It's like me in the car park. <laughs> it's never graceful, is it, getting out of these no. uh, cars? Well, you know, side intrusion, roll cages and all the other stuff make what look like fairly sizable doors a lot less sizable. Then you've got a helmet and a hands device, which means you can't turn your head, you can't see, and uh, it's all a bit of a wriggle. There's Max Bird, your race winner. Quick word from Alan Hyde for the uh, spectators here at the track. And they will feel a little bit short-changed that there wasn't uh, a bit more of this racing action from the Ginettas. Certainly the G40s produced lots and lots of uh, racing. GT5, though, that unfortunate first corner incident uh, rather curtailed their fun. They only got a total of seven laps in, of which, well, first wasn't a whole racing lap. We only got really two at the end, three at the end. And it's all as a result of this first corner incident, which took five or six cars out. Uh, essentially, basically, everybody from six to tenth on the grid, pretty much, uh, got involved. And once cars are going sideways in the first corner, then all bets are off. Uh, lots taking, avoiding action through the gravel trap. Once they had gone off, though, also getting eased off the road, 48 Gordon Much, who started on the front row of the grid. Most of their 15 minute time allowance, I'm afraid, was spent behind the safety car. Once we went green again, it was Max Bird from James Kellett, and those two cleared off, leaving Jerry Nicosia to battle with Alex Toff Jones as Ryan Hadfield explored rallycross career options in the background. So, two by two, they came. Further back again, a little bit of uh, misunderstanding over whose bit of road was whom's. Uh, Connor Grady paying the price there. Alex Toth Jones and Jerry Nicosia spending half a lap, not door handle to door handle, door handle on door handle, before Toth Jones finally secured third place for himself. And the Melbourne hairpin, as ever, producing a variety of different lines and a variety of different outcomes. So, from our 31 starters, all of whom finished the race one, 
Uh, we ended up with 24 at the end. Max Bird, James Kellett and Alex Toth-Jones, the top three.